Welcome to the 2021 Elphinstone Graduation Ceremony. We are privileged to be here at Elphinstone Secondary, situated on the unceded lands of the Skohomish Nation. My name is Mark Gertzen. I am tonight's Director of Ceremonies. Today, we celebrate the Elphinstone Graduating Class of 2021. Wherever you are watching this, I invite you to be present, to take the time for this entire ceremony and honour each individual student as we recognise them, their accomplishments, and the exciting opportunities that lay ahead of them as we look forward to the future. Sarah Manny will now introduce the graduates. I am honored to welcome the Elfie grads of 2021, Stella Eliang and Coral Christian. Anthony Alexis. Liam Allen and Owen Beerling. Brandon Bezer and Joe Uchimore. Elon Bilbach and Julian Howe. Pippa Boothroyd and Bridget Graham. Liam Brophy. Jennifer Brown and Tenzin Sangmo. Matthew Broughton and Carbon Charbonneau. Will Calvert. Hannah Carson and Emily Trivette. Sebastian Colley, Leandro Sita. Sorry, Leandro. Lachlan Conlon.
Amaya Connolly, and Harrison Ratcliffe. Jacob Coward, and James Hamilton. Celine Cummings, and Ella Rao. Rainer Del Rosario. Betsy Dempster and Caitlin Griswold. Maddie Dempster and Olivia Elliott. Bryson Bentley. Isla Brampton. Kaylee Humphreys and Isaiah Hill. Matt Drope and Ryan McDonough. Jaya Chohan. Riku Diamond and Austin Humphreys. Jamie DeRoe. Helena Vortzis and Kaylee Wanamaker. Jasmine Fitzsimmons. Corey Forche and Bianca Hanny. Josh Dykstra.
Natasha Gag and Hannah Larson. Eli Geltro and Isaac Hartley. Aiden Guy and Rowan Moore. Dawson Hall and Dane Porter. Vincent Hajuanum. Seth Havig and Finley Wired. Kendall Korsh and Olivia Tolk. James Ladred and Winston Weston Moore. Davin Lovrock and Kieran Sullivan. Ewan McElraith. Keaton McElraith and Andrew Parsley. Royal Lumley and Chloe McLaughlin. Megan Marquette and Charlotte Thompson. Amberly McLucky, McLucky and Montana Strong. Henry Motluck. Hannah Moxham and Eva Starsage. Eva Nielsen-Lowes and Lena 
Nielsen Lowe's. Rick Takahashi. Devlin Ockenden Brown and Eli Rowan. Joshua Ripley Horn. Jackson Rockford. Sora Shibasaka and Abby White. Mila Reeves Turan. Faye Duffy and Cohen Sawyer. Piper Gertson and Juliana Conyers. Tegan Sweet. Gravity, Ginyard, and Hannah Marinchak. Riley O'Sullivan. Murray Styles and Lucy Wolchuk Brown. Kennedy Vanderward and Mary Wood. Rathlin Phil and Ellie Gerbrandt. What an incredible group of individuals. I would now like to welcome a local member, member of the RCMP, Constable Nicole Hall, to the stage, as well as Sarah Douglas, who will be singing O Canada. Wherever you are right now, if you are able, please stand.
Thank you, Sarah. A big thank you also goes out to Derek Apple and Scott Bruce, our school counselors who work very closely with our students through both the graduation and scholarship process. Tonight would not be possible without the two of you. James Yamamura is this year's grad sponsor. It is not an easy role, and this year has made it exceptionally challenging. Thanks, James, for the work you have done for this grad class. I'd also like to recognize Keaton McElrath, who did all the drone footage for this ceremony. Everyone in the school has had extra challenges this year. I would like to recognize the entire staff at Elphinstone Secondary for all they have done. There are two individuals in our school who deserve our thanks more than anyone. Being a school administrator is a thankless job at the best of times, and there has been more to address this year than ever. A huge thanks to Sue Bailey and John Brisbois for the tireless work you have done all year. Lastly, I would like to thank all of you all of you, thank you for raising such fine young adults and for your patience and understanding through the circumstances of this year. The Seashell Nation has provided us with a welcome video we would like to share with you now. Mi wela e mash te shisha swia, chie te chen te ukwat swa welo se te te tiem, a te titu shant te shisha, chie te chen te manats, chie te chen klal te swa welos, chie te chen klal te hilhelos. Congratulating our our. All our graduates right from the preschool to high school and university. Uh, sharing our Sisha welcome song to welcome you to our Sisha Swia. Also the, after that we'd like to share our Sisha honor song to pay the highest honors to the wonderful work that you all did in your school year. Uh, acknowledging our dear singers and relatives that are here singing with us here today and our at, at staff that are standing with us to share and honor some beautiful songs with you here tonight. All no more child up, thank you. So we'll start off with our Sea Shock welcome song.
congratulating you all to change the ancient book Messiah. acknowledging I'm in beautiful Gibsons in traditional Squamish territory. First of all, congratulations to all grads this year. A wonderful accomplishment and a bright future ahead for everyone. I'd also like to thank everyone involved in being part of the school year this year. And this is the administrators, the teachers, the staff, and everyone who supported you through this unusual year. The commitment people have made to ensure that the best could be made of a difficult situation is to be commended. And on behalf of the Premier and of the people of the province, we're very proud of the accomplishments of students all across the province. I'm particularly pleased that Gibsons and the students on the Sunshine Coast uh, demonstrate once again their ability to get through difficult times together. And I hope that everyone recognizes the efforts that have been made by other British Columbians to ensure that we are safely through this difficult time with resilience and confidence in the future. So thank you to parents, grandparents, siblings, aunts and uncles, foster parents, step parents, and everyone who's been an integral part of your success. I wish you all the best and good luck. Thanks, Nicholas. Our next speaker is Mayor Bill Beamish, representing the town of Gibsons. Congratulations to all of you in the class of 2021. Wow, graduation is a tremendous accomplishment and we are all very proud of you. 
even more so because of the many challenges that you have faced for this entire final year, one that I am sure you will remember for the rest of your lives. Now it is time to move forward to what we all hope will be a COVID-free future, a future that will welcome your ideas, plans, and commitment to change to make a difference in our community and wherever you go from here. However, change only comes when people organize to take control and force decision makers like me, like the provincial government, like corporations to listen and respond. It begins with you and your individual behaviors as consumers and as community members. You have the power individually and collectively to lead and to introduce change and if necessary to drive the changes needed in this imperfect world. I welcome that and look forward to working with you and in some cases perhaps working for you. I was recently reminded that infinite growth on a finite planet is not sustainable. If we are to survive, we need to take control of our future. The recently established Sunshine Coast Youth Council is an example of how you, as students and young members of our community, can influence decision makers in areas like transportation, the environment, food security, balanced and sustainable community development, and many, many others. So to all of you, I say thank you for your passion, for your love of strange music and art, and for your commitment to a better future for Gibsons. I hope that you will stay, or if you leave for new adventures in education, that you will come home soon to help make our community an even better place. Now, if there's one thing that we have learned in the past year, it's that we are all the same. We are all subject to catching the virus, and the only way to prevent its spread is by working together in a family or friends bubble, and more broadly, in a community bubble. It should be no different going forward. Work together, support each other, and by all means, continue to stay safe. Today, in recognition of the very challenging year that we've all experienced, I am pleased to announce that Gibson's Council is awarding an additional 2,000 in scholarship funds to students at Elphinstone Secondary School and the Gibson's Alternate School. These funds will be awarded to students selected by the schools who have demonstrated a positive attitude and commitment to learning despite the many challenges they have faced this past year. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you, Bill. Next, I would like to introduce our Superintendent of Schools, Mr. Patrick Bocking, bringing greetings from School District 46. Hello, everyone. I am so pleased to be here with you at Elphinstone Secondary School to celebrate the graduating class of 2021. Your parents, the staff here, all of the community is so proud of everything that you've accomplished over the last 13 years of your education. Quite often I'm asked by graduating students whether they feel that they're actually ready for graduating in the next chapter in their lives. And I'm here to reassure you from lots of experience that you most certainly are. First, let's start with this school and the amazing staff that you've had the privilege to work with. They work so hard for your success and they support you with clubs and sports teams and a culture in this school that equips you to be successful no matter what you choose to do. Whether you're going into the world of work or university, college, perhaps you're traveling, perhaps you're going to still try to take a little bit of time to figure that out. You are equipped because of your experiences here at Elphinstone Secondary School to be whatever you want. And further than just the school, the entire province, as students in British Columbia, consistently rate extremely highly on international tests of academic achievement in literacy, numeracy, sciences, 
students in BC are incredibly well prepared to go out and attack the next stage in their lives. So from here at the school, at the provincial level, and of course with the support and love of your family and friends and community, you will be successful in whatever you choose to do. And that's why I'm so excited to be here with you to celebrate your graduation. We are all very proud of you. Congratulations. Thanks, Patrick. Representing the Board of School Trustees is Pamela Ruth. I am honored to be standing here before you to discuss, well, elephant in the room. Let's be honest here, I'm standing in front of an empty gymnasium. I know we're trying to make this transition as normal as possible, but truthfully, this is 2021. Your class, your graduating cohorts, have been directly affected by this pandemic. No formal, no prom, no dry grad, no public celebrations whatsoever of the achievements you have made, and you have achieved much. This was no small feat. The class of 2021 is the only graduating class that has gone through a full year of schooling during this pandemic. Unthinkable. Many will be watching you to see how you will react once in the real world, to see how you fare, to note if there are differences between your group and those who came before you and those after, to see if you persevere. I can tell you now that you will. Our strategic plan lists student voice as our number one priority for the board. You have shown us that voice. You have proven yourselves resilient, you are strong, and you are all very capable. The next few months may look different than what you had expected when you first walked through those school doors. Due to restrictions, you may have to stick close to home until the world reopens. That gap year in Australia that you had planned may be put on hold. Those classes at post-secondary may still be online, and that's okay. Keep planning for that travel, apply for those programs, and prove to the watching world that the global pandemic will not slow you down. You've got this. And so, I'm honored to be here on behalf of the Sunshine Coast Board of Education to congratulate all of you on your graduation. Now go get them. Thank you, Pamela. Mr. Derek Apple and Mr. Scott Bruce, with the help of Carrie Molman and John Brisbois, will now present the grads with their diplomas. Students of Métis heritage will receive a sash. Our Aboriginal students will receive a carved cedar eagle feather created for the grads by Spirit Works under the direction of seashell artist Shane Jackson. Eagle feathers have great cultural and spiritual value to Indigenous peoples. Both bald eagles and golden eagles and their feathers are considered sacred. They are honored with great care and treated with the deepest respect. Eagles represent honesty, truth, strength, courage, vision, wisdom, and freedom. When a person receives an eagle feather, they are being acknowledged. School District Number 46, Aboriginal Programs and Services, gives eagle feathers at commencement ceremonies to recognize the educational accomplishment of Indigenous students. People of the Aboriginal community have made the feathers available as a symbol of their pride and respect for the students. We also have a short video recognizing the significance of these carvings. Derek, Scott, Carrie, and John. My name is Shane Jackson. Uh, I'm a member of the Shishat Nation. Uh, I also carry the name Ninewam, which is a name given to me by some of the elders in my community. Um, another name I carry is Selapam, which is a name that my great-grandfather carried, so it's an ancestral name passed down to me. I'm holding one of our Spirit Works eagle feathers, and this is a feather that's made out of cedar, which is a very sacred wood to us. We consider it uh, uh, the tree of life so everything from 
Uh, the clothes that we wear, our regalia, the houses we live in, even uh, the boxes we cook our food in or put our things in are all made out of cedar. So it's got a gazillion different uses, basket weaving, cooking fires, uh, you know, the branches, uh, we use them in ceremony to brush things off. There's, uh, there's just so many things, but we've used them to create this beautiful eagle feather for you which I believe uh, is gonna be gifted to a lot of the graduates uh, that are coming through high school now. So congratulations to you um, for ending this part of your life and starting you know, an incredible new beginning somewhere. Eagle feathers in general, sometimes they're gifted to people um, who they feel um, possess certain traits related to like wisdom or excellence, or justice. Um, things of that uh, magnitude. Um, this particular one I've made, and to me, it not only represents just your regular eagle feather, but it actually represents, um, to me, the feather of one of our golden eagles, or our golden eagle, which is Chaskin in our language. There are many, many stories in our community about this mythical creature. If you look at the logo of our nation, you'll see a double-headed one. That's a depiction that uh, I've been taught is likened to uh, equality. So not just between men and women, but our two spirit people as well. It represents like power and courage and prestige, but the prestige isn't based on, you know, the power and courage alone. The prestige is based on what this figure does with the power and courage. So if you listen to all the stories, they're all about this mythical creature that brings everybody together to accomplish these impossible tasks, like, you know, building a really big longhouse or bringing the salmon back. So I like to think of this feather as representing, um, you know, those types of values in us, you know, working together, coming together, taking the best of what everybody has to offer to make ourselves stronger. Um, these are teachings that you have to carry with you through life. Um, you know, I'm very thankful of the folks that have passed those teachings on to me. Um, so I'm hoping that these feathers will remind people a little bit about these teachings. You'll notice that on the end, there are four tassels. In Salish culture, uh, the number four is a very sacred number. So it represents things like obviously four seasons, um, the four stages of life, infant, youth, adult, elder, um, and the responsibilities that come during each of those stages. Um, but more than anything, it represents the four corners and the four directions. So again, you know, um, traditionally, you know, my teachings have been that, you know, we were always welcoming uh, to people from outside because everybody would bring their strengths and their wisdom and their gifts. And then what we would do is welcome them in and we would share these gifts and in return to their, for their gifts to us, we would offer our strengths, our wisdom, our gifts in order to make our society stronger. So when you look at these fours and the number of four, that's what you want to think of as the four directions and people that come from all these directions. I hope that everybody who's getting one of these appreciates it. We certainly love making them. So all nomch. Stella Allium. Stella has enjoyed her years at Elphinstone. She would like to thank her family and friends. Coral Christian. Coral has had a great time attending Elphinstone. She would like to thank her friends and family. Anthony Alexis. 
Anthony will be attending the University of British Columbia Okanagan, studying biochemistry and molecular biology. He would like to thank his teachers for their hard work at making school pleasant during the tough circumstances. Liam Allen. After graduation, Liam plans to attain employment in the family business and potentially take it over one day. He would like to thank his friends for the memories and good times that he won't forget. Owen Beerling. Owen is working towards his Red Seal certification and will be continuing his apprenticeship. Brandon Bezer. Brandon's post-secondary plans include attending the University of Calgary for a Bachelor's of Commerce degree. He would like to thank his parents for supporting him throughout high school. Joe Uchi Moore. After graduation, Joe is planning to take a gap year. His future plans include working in Japan. Joe would like to thank his friends and family for all their support. Elan Bilbeck. After graduation, Elan has plans to pursue a career in the pipeline or welding industry. He would like to thank Mr. Healy and Miss Ross for always being great teachers. Julian Howe. Julian would like to thank everyone who has supported him over the years. Special thanks to Mr. McPherson and Mr. Gertzen for inspiring him and helping him grow as a person. Pippa Boothroyd. Next year, Pippa plans to study economics at McGill University. She would like to thank her teachers for being so understanding during this challenging year. Bridget Graham. Bridget plans to attend the University of British Columbia to study business. She would like to thank her friends and family and the staff at Elphinstone for supporting her. Bridget sends special thanks to her science teachers for inspiring her. Liam Brophy. Liam plans to take a gap year and later go to the university to study electrical engineering. He would like to thank Mr. McCaddy for being a great mentor and friend. Jennifer Brown. Jennifer plans to attend University of British Columbia to attend her journey into the medical career. She would like to thank Mr. Sopo for his amazing biology classes that have helped her to decide which field of study she would like to pursue. Tenzin Sangmo. Tenzin would like to thank her mom and dad for supporting her dreams and making her the person that she is today. Matthew Broughton. Matthew is planning on going to the University of Victoria to study humanities. He would like to thank Rick for being with him from the start of kindergarten all the way to the dorm room this coming September. Matthew would like to share a message with next year's graduates. Enjoy your grade 12 year. This year has been challenging times for us all. Hopefully it can be somewhat back to normal. Carmen Charbonneau. 
Carmen plans to explore her interest in psychology. She would like to thank her close friend, Alexa Davis, for supporting her all the way from Elkford, BC. Will Calvert. Will plans to pursue a career in social work. He would like to thank his peers and teachers for their support. Will especially thanks Mr. Brisbaugh. Hannah Carson. Hannah's post-secondary plans include getting her ECE certification. She would like to thank her mom for the endless nights of studying. She also thanks her dad for always being there for her and for all of their inside jokes. Lastly, Hannah would like to thank her brother Scott, her sister Megan, and the rest of her family for helping her become the woman she is today and inspiring her with a great career choice. She loves you all. Emily Trivet. Emily is very excited to start the next chapter in her life and have more freedom. She would like to thank her family and friends for being such amazing strong pillars in her life. Sebastian Colley. Sebastian plans to study mechanical engineering at UVic and pursue a career in aerospace engineering. He would like to thank Mr. Gertsen for being his physics teacher. Leandro Sida. Leandro has enjoyed his time at Elphinstone. He would like to thank his family and friends. Lachlan Conlon. Lachlan is very grateful for all the experiences Elphinstone has given him that he hopes to never forget. We would like to thank all those who were with him along the way. Amea Connolly. Amea plans to attend Camosun College for Dental Hygiene. She'd like to thank her family and friends for teaching her that she is stronger than she thinks. Harrison Ratcliffe. Harrison plans to attend Thompson Rivers University in September. She'd like to thank her mom and her friends for helping her make it through the years here at Elphinstone. Peace out, Elphinstone. Jacob Coward. Jacob would like to thank his family, friends, and teachers for making his high school experience memorable. He shares some advice for future class grads. Enjoy it while you have it because it sure goes by quick. <laughs> James Hamilton. James has plans to join the Canadian Coast Guard sometime in the near future. He would like to thank his family for all their support and assistance towards reaching his goals. Seelan Cummings. Seelan's future plans are to enjoy having the freedom to choose what she wants and when she wants. Seelan would like to thank her family for being cool and for her friends for being even cooler.
Ella Rowell. Ella is excited for the summer. She has enjoyed her years at Elphinstone. Ella would like to thank all of her friends and family, as well as the great staff at Elphinstone. Rainier de Rosario. Rainier has future plans to study musical engineering. He would like to work with different artists from around the world. Betsy Dempster. Betsy plans to work in the film industry as an art department assistant. She also has future plans that include university and traveling across Europe. Betsy would like to thank Ms. Sanders, Mr. Yamamura, and Mr. Cavison for making sure she completed all her work. Caitlin Griswood. Caitlin plans to take a gap year to work and volunteer before attending post-secondary school. Maddie Dempster. Maddie plans to attend post-secondary school for creative writing. She would like to thank her English teachers for always helping her improve and find her passion. Olivia Elliott. Olivia would like to travel internationally as soon as safely possible. Her future post-secondary plans include someday attending art school. Olivia would like to thank Ms. Douglas and Ms. Robertson for making high school worth remembering. Bryson Bentley. Bryson plans to continue working full-time on the coast and enjoying life. He would like to thank staff, family, and friends for all the support they have given him throughout the years. Isla Brampton. Isla is planning to take a gap year to do some travel. She also has plans to work in the film industry. I would like to thank Ms. Robertson for inspiring her with fun art projects and pushing her to succeed. She would also like to thank Mr. Beiser for allowing her to realize she actually enjoys pre-calculus. Isla also thanks her friends and family for dealing with her crazy self. Kaylee Humphreys. Kaylee has plans to take a gap year and continue working. She would like to say a big thank you to Ms. Ross for being the, there for most of her high school experience. To her fellow classmates, Kaylee wishes you well. Even though it was a bumpy start to the year, we have all made it through. Isaiah Hill. Isaiah plans to work an internship at William F. White's, a film production company. He also has plans to travel to Costa Rica and then spend some time working once he returns. Isaiah would like to thank his mom and his uncle for always supporting his decisions and his friends for always keeping life eventful. Matthew Drope. Matthew plans to take time off from schooling to do some skiing. Further, he would like to pursue schooling to become a paramedic. Matthew would like to thank his family for their constant support and his friends for all the memories. Ryan McDonough. After graduation, Ryan is unsure of what his plans will be. 
He would like to thank everyone for supporting his decisions. Jaya Chohan. Jaya has had a good time here at Elphinstone. He would like to thank his friends, family, and staff. Riku Diamond. Riku would like to thank everyone at Elphinstone for a great and memorable three years. He would like to share best wishes with all. Austin Humphreys. Austin has plans to travel to the East and find his self spiritually. He has further plans to study in the field of medicine. Jamie Duro. Jamie has just completed his first and final year at Elphinstone after moving from England. He has plans to attend the University of British Columbia in September to study biology. Jamie would like to thank his teachers for being helpful and supportive. Elena Vortzis. Elena plans to attend the Capilano University to study to be a dental hygienist. She would like to thank her friends and family. She especially thanks her best friends, Eva and Kaylee. Kaylee Wanamaker. Kaylee is planning on taking a gap year and continue working. She would like to thank her friends and family, and especially her best friend, Elena. Jasmine Fitzsimmons. Jasmine plans to attend McGill University in the fall, studying within the Faculty of Science. To her classmates, she says, peace. Corey Fortier. Corey plans to attend the University of Northern British Columbia to become a civil engineer. He would like to thank Mr. Beiser and Mr. Gertzen for being the best teachers he could ever have wished for. Thanks to these two teachers, Corey has been inspired to pursue further education. Bianca Hannon. Bianca plans to attend the University of Victoria. She has further plans to become an elementary school teacher. She would like to thank Mr. Topping and Ms. Heilig for making classes enjoyable and really caring for the students. Josh Dykstra. Josh is looking forward to working in the real world. He would like to thank Mr. Yamamura. Josh would like to share some words to everyone. Live life to the fullest. Asha Gag. Asha wishes to thank all of her friends, family, and teachers that have supported her through the last five years at Elphinstone. She wishes you all the best. Hannah Larson. After graduation, Hannah is not quite exactly sure what her future holds, but she is thankful to all of her teachers for assisting her with the tools to face it. Her years at Elphinstone have been memorable. Hannah also thanks her friends that have stayed by her side. Eli Giltro. Eli plans to attend the University of Northern British Columbia studying a history and political science program. Further plans include traveling to Europe to complete his degree. Eli would like to thank Mr. Topping 
for enhancing his interest in history. Isaac Hartley. After graduation, Isaac plans to stay on the coast. He has further plans to work towards a career as an electrician. Aiden Guy. Aiden plans to attend McGill University and major in biology, biomedicine, and life sciences. She would like to thank Elphinstone for being so welcoming and making her senior year one to remember. Rowan Moore. Rowan would like to thank his mum and stepdad for always supporting him. He also thanks his brothers for being his best friends. Dawson Hall. Dawson would like to thank his family, friends, and the teachers who helped him along the way. Dane Porter. After graduation, Dane plans to take a year off school to work and decide what he wants to do for the future. Dane would like to thank his friends, family, and his biggest supporters, Kaylee, Helena, and Dawson. Vincent Hajwanu. Vincent is working towards getting his Red Seal certification in automotive. He would like to share a big thank you to Roy and Cool School program for providing an educational trades program for students wanting to learn. Seth Havoc. Seth had plans to move to Victoria. He would like to thank his mom for always being there for him. Finley Wire. Finley has had a great four years with everyone at Elphinstone. He wishes all of his classmates a lot of fun in the future. Kendall Korsh. Kendall Plan thanks her supporters for helping her through these past five years at Elphinstone. Olivia Tolk. After graduation, Olivia plans to take a gap year. Further plans include traveling once it's safe to do so. Olivia would like to thank her parents and her friends. James Ledre. James has plans to pursue a career in the automotive industry. He is currently working on an apprenticeship in mechanics. James would like to thank his automotive teacher, Brenda Mastich. He also thanks his family for all their support.
Weston Moore. Weston has future plans to obtain his pilot's license and one day fly across Canada. He would like to thank his classmates for all the motivation and support. Davin Lovrock. Davin has future plans to save up and travel outside of Canada for his first time. He would like to thank Hoya Lovrock for being his guide and best friend since day one. Kieran Sullivan. After graduation, Kieran plans on taking a gap year. Future plans include traveling. Kieran would like to thank his family and friends for all the support throughout the years. Ewan McElraith. Ewan's future plans include staying on the Sunshine Coast as he is working toward his Level 1 Red Seal Certification in Plumbing. Ewan has further plans to attend BCIT in the fall or early next year. He would like to thank his friends and family for helping him throughout high school and for pushing him to achieve goals that he thought he may not achieve. He shares with his classmates, push yourself to achieve great things and don't stop believing. Keaton McElraith. Keaton would like to say thank you to all his friends, family, and teachers for getting him to where he is now. Andrew Parsley. Andrew plans to attend CAPU to study psychology and 3D modeling. He would like to thank his parents for always being there for him. Andrew would also like to thank Captain Douglas of the 858 Air Squadron and Miss Douglas of the Musical Theater Program. He also thanks Miss Sanders and Mr. Blackman for helping him become a better writer. Royal Lumley. Royal plans to stay on the coast and continue working at the log sorting grounds. She'd like to thank her family and friends. Chloe McLaughlin. Chloe plans to work for the next year to save for post-secondary. Further plans include attending Dalhousie University to study dermatology. She would like to thank her friends and family for the love and support throughout the past few years. Megan Marquette. Megan plans to attend Thompson Rivers University in September. She would like to thank her parents and friends for the support throughout high school. Peace out, Elphinstone. Charlotte Thompson. Charlotte plans to attend Thompson Rivers University in September. She would like to thank her friends and family for getting her through the years. Peace out, Elphinstone. Amber Lee McClucky. Amber Lee has enjoyed her years at Elphinstone. She thanks her friends, 
her family, and the Elphinstone staff. Montana Strong. Montana would like to thank her friends and family for supporting her through everything. She would also like to thank Ms. Marquis and Mr. Yamamura for the endless amount of support and guidance. Henry Motlock. Henry plans to attend BCIT to study accounting. He would like to thank Mr. Yamamura and Mr. Walls for being great teachers. <laughs> Hannah Moxon. Hannah plans to attend the University of Victoria and work towards a degree in psychology. Hannah knows that her future plans will include working that will help to benefit others. She would like to thank all of her teachers during her years at Elphinstone for always inspiring her to do her best. Eva Starsage. Eva plans to attend the University of Victoria and major in political science. Further plans include attending law school later in life. She would like to thank her family, her friends, and Mr. Yamamura for all of his support with Grad Council. Eva Nielsen Lowe's. Eva plans to attend Thompson Rivers University to complete her early childhood education diploma. She would like to thank her friends for making these five years at Elphinstone unforgettable. Eva especially thanks her parents for always being there. Lena Nilsson Lowe's. After graduation, Lena plans to take a gap year. Future plans include traveling. Lena would like to thank her family and friends for supporting her and sticking with her throughout the last five years. Rick Takahashi. Rick would like to thank his friends and family for helping him get through the challenging year. Devlin Ockenden Brown. Devlin has enjoyed his time at Elphinstone. He would like to thank Rick Riku Diamond for all of his support. Joshua Ripley Horn. Joshua is planning on attending the University of Northern British Columbia to study physics. He would like to thank his family and his friends. Jackson Rockford. Jackson has future plans to become a physicist. He believes that hard work pays off. Eli Rowan. Eli has plans to stay on the coast. He would like to thank his friends and his family. Sora Shibasaka. Sora has future plans to spend some time working and to live with her friends. Abby Whiten. 
Abby has enjoyed her time at Elphinstone. She thanks her friends, her family, and all who have supported her along the way. Mila Reeves Turin. Mila has future plans to travel the world. She also has plans to take over her family business one day. Mila would like to thank her family and especially her sisters for supporting her. Faye Duffy. Faye plans to attend UVic in the fall. She would like to thank everyone who supported her throughout her years at Elphinstone. Cohen Sawyer. Cohen plans to attend Thompson Rivers University in the fall. She is excited to have the opportunity to play volleyball at the university level. Cohen would like to thank her very supportive family for helping her throughout her journey. She also thanks Miss Manny for the constant guidance and especially Mr. Brisebois for helping her keep her ego in check. Piper Gertson. Piper plans to attend the Sauter School of Business at UBC in the fall. She'd like to thank her family, friends, teachers, and coaches who have supported her throughout her schooling at Elphinstone. Juliana Conyers. Juliana plans to attend Emily Carr University of Art and Design. She'd like to thank her friends, family, and teachers for supporting her. Tegan Sweet. Tegan plans to attend CBC for general studies and to play volleyball. She'd like to thank her coaches for pushing her to get where she is today. Tegan also thanks her family for laughing at her and her friends for laughing with her. She especially thanks Elphinstone for all the amazing memories and opportunities. Peace out, Elphinstone. Gravity Ginyard. In September, Gravity plans to attend Trinity College at the University of Toronto, where she will study biochemistry or biology. Future plans include working in the biotechnology or medical field. She is extremely grateful for her teachers, her friends, and her mom for their incredible patience and willingness to answer her questions. To all of Elphinstone, she says, stay spiffy. Hannah Marinchak. Hannah plans to study French, Math, and Spanish at UBC next year. She'd like to thank her parents, friends, teachers, and all of the incredible people that have helped her high school experience so meaningful. She wishes everyone the best of luck in the years to come. Riley O'Sullivan. Riley has plans to attend UBC. He would like to thank his family for the constant support. Murray Stiles. Murray plans to continue her studies at UVic and pursue a career in education. She would like to thank all of her teachers for inspiring her and creating various interesting pronunciations of her name.
Lucy Woolchuck Brown. Lucy plans to attend UBC. She'd like to thank her friends for explaining everything to her all the time. Kennedy Vanderwerp. Kennedy plans to attend SFU to study at the Beattie School of Business. She'd like to thank Ms. Robertson for helping her expand and grow into the person she is today. Mary Wood. Mary will be attending the University of Winnipeg. She plans to study criminology and play for Westman women's soccer team. Mary would like to thank her family and friends for supporting her throughout high school. Some of her best memories at Elphinstone are the performative activism that occurred during Black History Month and Black Lives Matter. Rathlin fell. After graduation, Rathlin has plans to take a gap year. Further plans include studying kinesiology at Acadia University in Nova Scotia. Rathlin would like to thank her sister for helping her through English class. Ellie Gabrand. After graduation, Elia plans to attend Texas A&M University. She has plans to compete on the equestrian team. Congratulations, graduates. Each year, the grad class honors an individual by asking them to be their guest speaker. This year, their choice is Emily Ross. Hello, grads. You did it. You really did it. I'm still a little bit in disbelief. Some of you will forever be stuck in my head as grade eights, grade nines, and some even as grade sevens. I can't help it. Whenever I see you out driving, I flash back to when you were in grade eight. This isn't going to go away. You're going to be 30 and I'm going to be thinking of this still. I asked a couple of students to go get Chromebooks from the library. It didn't take long before I heard a massive crash against a wall. I was worried that we were going to go into a lockdown drill. For better or worse, I found out that it was those students who I had sent crashing the Chromebook cart into the wall. Don't worry, all the Chromebooks worked just fine after I made those students test them. But that's you driving in my mind. I suppose I'll need to get used to this new reality though. You're grown up. Well, mostly. Some of you, more than just a handful of you, have had to deal with Ms. Ross's words of wisdom throughout the years. Well, this is your last chance to really receive them. So, let me sit you down for your final Ms. Ross's words of wisdom. There's three points. Bear with me on this. Number one, stay scrappy. Being scrappy is a good thing. As many of you know, I was calling dibs on being your grad sponsor since you were in grade nine to much people, many people shock. Life had other plans for me. When I was so vocal about this, one of the teachers told me that I must really like the scrappy ones. Yes, I do. I actually really love to teach and connect with the scrappy ones. Being scrappy doesn't always have the best connotation, however. Generally, it sounds rough around the edges and more negative. 
I don't see it that way. Being scrappy means that you're a fighter. In this case, with all of you, I've seen a definition that has grown and expanded throughout the years. In grade eight and nine, you weren't always the easiest bunch. I'd often hear arguments with each other, other grades, and with teachers, some of you opting to argue with me. From the beginning of grade nine until the end though, I saw immense growth. That has only increased throughout the years. When you were in grade nine, there was a PE class that I had to talk to in January. If you were in this class, you know who you are. I had to tell them I didn't know if I wanted to reapply to teach them in the second half. I was always going to reapply. This is a tough bunch though. Every day there was an argument, people felt incredibly left out and they just couldn't seem to come together. By the end of the year, they had bonded over forest games and indoor ultimate. Nothing else, but forest games and indoor ultimate, I was gonna just take it. By the end of that year, they were passing to everyone. And I mean everyone. Those of you who have taken a PE class, who have taught a PE class, you know that this is actually a rare thing. They were kind to each other, they looked out for each other, and they worked together every single day. It was amazing to witness. One of the students in that class would be a peer tutor in the coming years. This student's greatest strength as a peer tutor was using that scrappy behavior, sometimes being a little unorthodox in their way of dealing with things, but they would always look out for those who didn't feel like they fit in in a typical PE setting. This one student and this one class are only two of so many examples that I've seen over the years. You became role models. Some of you probably without even realizing it. I've seen you fighting for what you care about and what you're passionate about for so many years. I've seen this in extracurricular activities, in classes, and in the halls. I know sometimes you fight with each other, but more often these days, I see you fight for each other. I've seen you stand up for the underdog, for others who are down, whether it be a classmate, someone in a younger grade. I've seen you stand up for teachers, and no, I'm not talking about myself. Hold on to this quality. Stand up for others. Stand up for what you believe in. Stay scrappy. Point number two. Don't worry, they'll get faster. Lead with your heart. People grow, give them a chance. On more than one occasion, I've had a student from this grad class come into my classroom, the PE office, or even stop me in the hallways to vent about something that happened. So here's my three most common complaints over the years. Number three, so-and-so is so annoying. Quite often, I wouldn't be told what they did or the name, thank you. Do not give me that information, I don't want to know. Complaint number two, grade nines think they own the school and are giving so much attitude. Grads and other older grades, grade nines, they don't think they own the school. They know they don't own the school. They're just getting more comfortable. Remember that you were in that position, just give them a bit of grace on this. And by far, the number one complaint. Grade eights, sometimes grade nines, are blocking the hallway. By far, like I said, the number one complaint. Future grade eights, current grade eights, take note, stand to the side of the hallway. I'm pretty sure all the grads would agree. To quote more than one of them, it's about respect, Ms. Ross, or it's about respect, Ms. Ross. All this is normal. Let's get back to the leading with your heart. People are going to frustrate you no matter how old you get. Trust me. Sometimes you just need a safe person to talk to. However, do not close your heart off to the people who annoy you. Don't close your heart off to the people who have bothered you. Take space. Give them a chance to grow. Give them another chance. Lead with your heart that way. Now, Coming back to a couple little examples here that I've seen throughout the years. It's the small things you do on a daily basis. One student in this group opted to tell me a bad joke based on a pun anytime I was having a bad day. 
It would always start with a fake laugh from me and turn into a real one. But thank you to that student. It was memorable. To the students who skipped out on a class run, but decided to bring me pizza. I'm still not impressed with the fact that you skipped the run. Don't worry, parents, there were consequences. But the pizza was delicious. Thank you to the students over the years who brought me my coffee mug from the other side of the school on your way to class. Offered me coffee occasionally, you can see the theme there. Told bad jokes over the years. You've made me tear up with your kindness and you've done so much more for others, including friends, family members, teachers, people in this community. When you lead with the heart, even with small things, you make a difference. Okay, number three, this is my last piece of wisdom. Stay safe and keep in touch. This one's simple, I might get a bit sappy here. You should have known that was coming though. For this next year, and many more years to come, stay safe, I mean it. Think of the advice your family has given you over the years, especially what has been said to keep you in one piece. Use this advice. Look both ways before you cross the street. If you're sick, go see a doctor. Don't drink or do drugs and drive. And don't get into a car with someone who has done this. You know this. I mean it, stay safe. We want to be able to hear about all of your adventures. I know I want to. This can't happen if something happens to you. I've missed you while I've been home with the baby this past year. I've been reflecting on grade eight drama classes with some of you literally climbing on top of each other like puppies. Junior basketball trips where a couple of you admitted your favorite movie at the time was Pitch Perfect. I'm not naming names. But just so you know, I remember this and it still makes me smile every time. I thought about goofy fitness video assignments, heard songs that will always remind me of this group doing Just Dance. I've loved talking with one or two of you, not many more, about how bedtime is self-imposed at eight o'clock, no later. I'm so happy that some of you truly understand a proper bedtime. I've gone to pick up poinsettias this year and got to see a whole group of you, and that was really memorable and so important to me. There's so many more memories. You're going to be missed. You make so much of an impact on this community, on people around you, than you will ever know. Some of you will be leaving soon to go off and have your adventures. Some of you will find plenty of adventure right here. However, you're all going to be leaving this school. I know high school can be rough, and some of you are not going to miss it. But please remember that people here will always miss you. You have a lot of life left to live. Go out and live it. Please remember my words of wisdom, though. Number one, stay scrappy. It's a good thing. Number two, lead with your heart. Number three, possibly most important, stay safe and keep in touch. Thank you and congratulations. I'm so proud of you. The next three awards are one of the ways we preserve the history of the students at this school. To help present these are Mr. John Brisbois and Ms. Sue Bailey. The first award is for the grad of the year. This is perhaps the most significant to the grads because they vote on it themselves. It is given to the grad who they feel has made the biggest contribution to their grad class. This year, the award goes to Cohen Sawyer. The top academic award is the Headland Shield. This prestigious award is given to the top academic student. It takes an incredible, consistent effort to achieve this award. This year, that student is Hannah Marincheck. Come on up, Hannah.
The third award is the Ex Elfi Award. It's made up of all the awards that melted when the original school burned down in the 70s. It recognizes the top aggregate student who has excelled in all areas of school achievement, including academics, athletics, and service to the community and school. This year, the award is being shared by three exceptional students. Congratulations to Piper Gertsen, Gravity Gignard, and Hannah Marinchuk. I'd like to invite them up individually to receive their award. Piper. Gravity, come on up. And hand. Thank you girls and congratulations. Our next speaker tonight, as chosen by the grad class, is the person they feel can best represent who they are as a group. Please welcome this year's valedictorian, Cohen So. Hit it, just kidding. I am honored to be here, standing in front of you, theoretically, representing the grad class of 2021. Before I begin, I would like to take a moment to acknowledge that we are honored to live, learn, and play on the unceded territory of the Skohomish Nation. As most of you know, this year is quite unique. We're all aware of the losses we grads have endured, and because of that, you don't need me to list them off to you. Instead of making a depressing speech that outlines our grad year, because let's be honest, that would probably be pretty boring. Rather, let's take a glimpse into what life has been like for us each year at Elphinstone Secondary. I didn't learn much in high school, but I did learn how to write an essay. So, this format is for you, the English teachers of Elphinstone. Grade seven, the intro paragraph. My actual high school experience did not start on the first day of grade eight. It actually started in grade seven. To be more specific, grade seven day. I walked into the school feeling confident, but of course a little nervous. We were all assigned a group that was categorized by color. I walked over to the sign-in area and was directed to my table. Despite my best efforts to play it cool, it was a little hard when there were cute new boys from the other elementary schools that I'd never met before, not to mention the high school boys that we passed in the hall. Hey Piper, remember Terrence? Hello, gorgeous. Probably gonna regret that later. We were brought around to the elective classrooms. We saw a few basic grade eight classes such as math and science and met a few teachers in an attempt to simulate a real authentic high school classroom experience. But grade seven day taught me le uh, many lessons, but there are three main things I would like to share with you today. Number one, Chef Barry was indeed worth the hype. Those cookies. Number two, quick fact, we are all penguins. Now you may be wondering what I'm talking about, but to be completely honest with you, I don't think one graduating student would be able to tell you what Mr. Avila truly meant when he said that to us. But for some reason, that phrase sits in the back of my mind like the sound of Eli Giltro's chair scooting back as his brow furrows in preparation to start yet another argument. And number three, finally, my third takeaway from grade seven day was that just not having a lock on my locker would probably be a lot easier than going through the whole three turns to the right, two to the left, and one more to the right every single morning. Grade eight, body paragraph one. Finally, the day came, grade eight. I put on my ripped skinny jeans, half up, half down hair, and my Victoria's Secret pink hoodie. At the start of the day, we filled our lockers with our books and bags with little room to spare. Some new students took it in stride, but for me, and I'm sure any other student with an older sibling, 
It was a realization that our lockers were actually too small to be shoved inside. This was a success in my books. The majority of this year was filled with familiarizing ourselves with the building, exploring electives, learning how to wash our cars and fish in the dark, get it, and actually putting some effort into our appearance, all while realizing that we had been dropped to the bottom of the food chain after running our elementary schools. While it is an accepted rule that all grade eights start at the bottom, it is evident that this year's group did not get the memo. Grade nine, body paragraph two. Grade nine differed slightly for us. We were settled into our friend groups and we were promoted to the grade nine hallway. For those of you who don't know where the grade nine hallway is, it's also known as the shop hallway. Every day we got to hear the band practice, which was lovely, but I wouldn't say that pairing it with the noises from the wooden automotive went well together. It was loud and it smelled. It always smelled like wet grass, but nothing beat the smell of us. We were in grade nine, so there was a mix of rotting food and lockers, too much perfume, sorry, Ms. Dirksen, and just good old teenage boy smell. Unfortunately, grade nine was also the year that we behaved pretty poorly. Mr. Murphy having to pull students out of class due to their behavior was a regular occurrence. So, because of our behavior, I would like to make a formal apology to our teachers. I truly do not know how you've put up with us for the past five years. Another issue in grade nine occurred at lunch. I have a vivid memory of myself sitting on the ground eating my lunch when an entire mandarin orange zoomed in front of my face. In disbelief, I shot my head in the direction of the thrower to see absolutely nobody even looking in my direction. Who threw the orange? Where is the orange today? Yet another mystery from the grade nine hallway. We were awful at lunchtime. There were food containers left on the floor every day, entire sandwiches left unattended, our utter lack of motivation to walk our garbage to our garbage, return our Tupperware to our lockers, and sure, we were kicked out of our hallway numerous times by our administrators. In this hallway, we also had these big staircases that led up to the shops. We would sometimes sit on those stairs and eat our lunch, but I remember one day, I glanced up at the wall above the staircase and saw a completely untouched, pristine piece of cheddar cheese stuck to the wall where no one could reach it. To this day, I don't know who put it up there, and I don't know when the cheese came down, but what I do know is that whoever placed it in the garbage 100% has the cheese touch. With that being said, on behalf of my grade, I would like to extend a formal apology to our incredible custodial staff. I am truly so sorry for the mess, but I am afraid that one of you still may have the cheese touch. Our grade nine year was, year was by far my least favorite, but I would like to take a moment to acknowledge the fact that Liam Brophy lugged his suitcase speaker all the way down the hall so we could have a sing-along to Hey There Delilah and Empire State of Mind. This brought joy to us grade nines, but unfortunately, it had the opposite effect on our principals in nearby classrooms. Grade 10, body paragraph three. This year was in fact the test trial for the new locker system. So instead of having all of us in the same hallway, our grade, along with the two grades below us, were spread out throughout three hallways. This meant that more than 30% of grade 10s had to use a grade eight locker, yet again, including myself, completely over it. And this also meant that at least 30% of incoming grade eights had a grade 10, grade 10 size locker. Our administration pitched this as an opportunity to connect with the younger grades, but upon reflection, it may have been, or they may have wanted to divide and conquer our grade after the grade nine debacle. To say the least, we were not pleased with this new arrangement. Grade 11, body paragraph four. In my personal opinion, grade eight was complicated. After rarely seeing each other in grade 10, we were all given lockers in the same hallway. Despite being reunited, we all sort of stuck to our friend groups and just made it day by day. Lunchtime Subway, Jimmy's, Super Value, Sima Sushi, and Cap Runs were a must for students who did not pack a lunch. The only difference was that we had now learned how to properly dispose of our garbage, for the most part. Lunchtime garbage basketball does not count in this equation. Everything was running smoothly until, you guessed it, COVID-19. The news about online school came out and we had to pack up and clean out our grade 11 lockers and try to finish school from home. Online school was 50-50. Some teachers were keen to get out of a COVID hotspot, Zoom from home, have a break from students, and have the opportunity to work from their garden, while other teachers like Mr. Topping were a little more reluctant to embrace the new technology. Through trial and error, we made it through online school and we're headed on the road to grade 12. Grade 12, the conclusion. And finally, the last year of high school. Hopefully, 
for all of us. And I'm really hoping everyone remembered to submit their capstone on time. We got the news that we would be back to school in September, although there were many new regulations. The general consensus was that we were just happy to have a normal-ish last year at Elphinstone. For some, grade 12 was a luxury. We got to take specific classes that we needed for our programs. We had big lockers, like I'm talking, big lockers. We could roll up to class just as the teacher called our name from the attendance, Timmy's cup in one hand, waving our lanyards like our Lambos were parked in the back by the daycare. In our grad parking lot, there's a variety of cars. There's Olivia's Infinity, Anthony's Mercedes, Rainer's Mustang, Rowan, Piper, Corey, and Kieran's mom vans, and of course, my Toyota Echo. Not to mention the highlight of every single day, watching Liam Allen's gymnastics while he tries to get in and out of his truck. It became even more entertaining when he started wearing his cowboy boots. With owning cars comes getting your end something that was postponed for us due to the pandemic. So when ICBC reopened, the phones were swarmed with grade 12s trying to book an appointment. Some of us got our ends first try. Thank you, Klaus. For some, it took a few more than that. Not to name names, but their names might rhyme with mine. But despite prior beliefs, once you get your end, it's not all fun. I had to watch Miss Kershamom hit a curb in the IGA parking lot, and we all have to swerve by Mr. Visor on his bike every morning. We are not the risk here. I got my COVID vaccine a week or so ago, and the woman at the registration table asked me for my birthday. After telling her I was born in 2003, she looked at me and said, are you graduating this year? I was a little confused, but I hesitated and answered with a yes. She looked at me and said that that's impossible and that we are still babies. To me, this proved a few things. Number one, yes. 17 does feel a little early to be launched into the real world. And number two, it showed me that the rest of the world is just as unprepared for us to be graduating as we are. Each year of high school was different. We went from tiny, immature grade eights to slightly taller, immature grade 12s. We've grown up together and shaped each other into the people we are today. Thank you to all of our family, friends, teachers, support staff, community members, administration, and the school district 46 for all of the support these past five years. A special shout out to Georgina for planning our poinsettia and plant sale, Mr. Yamamura for putting up with our grad council, and everyone who supported our grad class with these fundraising events. And a shout out goes to Bob and Sue Hoy for willingly hiring half of our grade. This was a challenge nobody else was willing to face, although I think Marks might be coming for the title. It takes a village to raise a child, and I can certainly say that this is probably one of the most caring, compassionate, and unique villages to be raised in. Thank you to all of the guardians, coaches, and mentors that shaped us into who we are today. And finally, thank you to all of the graduates. We may have not gotten along all the time. We may have had some pretty heated classroom debates, a LAN, but I can say that we've done something pretty special this year. We graduated during a pandemic. This is not a statement that many people can make, but also not really a statement many people want to make. Many things are missing from a traditional ceremony, but for me, I can't stop thinking about throwing my cap in the air with all my fellow graduates standing with me. So, I've asked all of the graduates to have their caps with them today. A third of you probably don't even have it with you. A third of you probably do, but won't participate. And the last third of you are probably waiting for me to stop talking so we can just get it over with. Are you ready for the most lame thing of 2021? On the count of three. One, two, Three. Pretty lame. So, congratulations to the graduating class of 2021. We actually did it. Thank you. Thank you, Cohen. It is an honor for me to close tonight's ceremony. And as we do so, I would like you all to think about the future. As the Earth orbits the sun, we move forward through space and time at 30 kilometers per second. 30 kilometers per second. Imagine driving off the ferry in Langdale and arriving at Corpus Bay Campground one second later. That is how fast the Earth moves as we revolve around the sun. This means we have traveled over 200,000 kilometers since the beginning of this ceremony. As occupants of this fabulous Earth, we have no choice but to move forward. Grads, you have made the trip around the sun 17 or 18 times and it would be easy to be trapped in the regret of all the things that didn't happen during this last revolution. 
I invite you to let go of that and look forward, ahead, beyond today, to the incredible opportunities ahead of you. Travel, university, work, trade school, college, apprenticeships, new friends, old friends, parties, concerts, hugs, seeing people's entire face, smiles. It's going to be so great. Get ready. The next few millions of kilometers you travel will bring you challenges, surprises, and yes, difficulties too, but hopefully also much, much laughter and joy. Embrace the journey forward. It happens faster than you think. 30 kilometers per second fast, to be exact. On this adventure forward, don't forget to appreciate those who helped you reach this milestone. Family, teachers, coaches, friends, and mentors in the community. One of the ways our community supports our graduates is through local scholarships and bursaries. The list of recipients will be in the credits at the end of this ceremony. Thank you to the generous donors and congratulations to the well-deserving graduates. Also included at the end of this presentation are several messages for this year's grads from past Elphinstone graduates, so stay tuned in for that also. In closing, we wish you the very best in whatever you choose to do. An Irish blessing sums it up nicely. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind always be at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and the rain fall soft at your feet. Congratulations to the Elphinstone Secondary graduating class of 2021. Good night.
I'm Lauren Grant. I graduated from LP in the year 2000. I am a film and television producer now based in Toronto. Thinking about what I wanted to share with you all, it struck me that I graduated from high school 21 years ago. We actually missed a reunion last year. It made me think about something someone told me once, that you never really feel old enough, which is kind of another way of saying you never feel ready. But here's the thing. Despite any success I may have achieved, I realized that I may never feel 100% ready for that next challenge, but I still need to take that leap. That step, large or small, that leads me down the next path. This year, more than anything, I'm sure you've all been forced to take many steps down many paths that you never imagined when you started at Elfi. These leaps will continue as you move forward with your lives, whether that takes you down the street, across the country, or to another part of the world. So as we try to get back to normal, I challenge you all to think about what parts of normal are worth getting back to because normal isn't as powerful as moving forward. This year, the pandemic has been life-changing. It's highlighted the inequities and injustices in our world. A global civil rights movement has forced us to reckon with our actions, our history. This past week in Canada has been incredibly hard and challenging. It is very easy for us to not wanna think about it, to look away and to just try to get back to normal but that's actually going backwards. So my hope for all of you graduating is that you move forward, you grow, you challenge yourself, and most importantly, you remain curious because we may never feel old enough. We may never feel ready, but if we take the leap anyway and be curious and open to other perspectives, we're gonna create a new world led by your generation. And that's pretty damn exciting. Congratulations to the class of 2021. Hi, this is Sam Heppel, Elphinstone class of 2003, sending big congratulations from Chicago to everyone in the class of 2021. You've each taken different paths to get here and your journeys going forward will all look different too. My journey took me to UBC where I got my BA in international relations in 2008, then to Ottawa where I worked for a member of parliament on issues like prison reform and police accountability, then to Harvard Law School where I got my law degree in 2014, and finally to Chicago where I now work as a civil rights lawyer representing people whose rights have been violated by the police and other state officials. The past 15 months have been hard and they've revealed cracks in our society that run far deeper and longer than the pandemic. Now more than ever, we need smart, compassionate young people who are committed to being part of the work to help heal our broken world. Wherever your journey takes you, know that each and every one of you has talents and skills that you can use, passions and dreams that you can follow to make your community a better place and to fill our world with more love and joy and humor and justice. Congratulations, Elphinstone Secondary, class of 2021. Hello, grads of 2021. Congratulations on making it to this monumental milestone. Uh, my name is Sophie Heppel. I was uh, an Elphinstone grad in 2007, which doesn't really feel that long ago, but when you're saying it to people who were born after Y2K, yeah. Uh, it sounds a little longer. Um, but yeah, congratulations to all of you. I know this is a hard time in general and with the pandemic, it only makes these things harder. And I hope you all know how proud the community is of you, uh, even though I don't think you'll be able to celebrate in the ways that graduates have been able to in the past. Um, but I hope you're all feeling very proud of yourselves. Um, I had a great time at Elphinstone and in the past 14 years uh, I went to university, I studied music, uh, I played in several bands, we did some touring through Europe and across North America uh, and now I still play in some bands but I also uh, teach at a program in Vancouver called St. James Music Academy. It's for at-risk youth so they get free music lessons, uh, free snack after school and uh, yeah it kind of creates a nice 
community for them. Um, yeah, so that's what I've been up to <laughs> these last decade and a half. And again, congratulations to all of you and good luck. I am Dr. Emily Kate Higgins and a proud member of the class of 2001. I have fond memories of my time at Elfie and most importantly, the lifelong friends that I made there. It's hard to believe that it was 20 years ago when I was standing in your shoes, excited for the unknown of the future to come. At that point, I had no idea I would spend another 10 years in school, studying at three different universities, working to become a family doctor. Along the way, I had the opportunity to meet people from all over the world with different backgrounds and experiences. A large part of my current practice is working on the maternity care ward. The first babies that I delivered are now in high school, just a couple of years younger than yourselves. And today, I delivered two babies of the future class of 2039. Why I tell you this is that time goes quickly, regardless of how you choose to spend it. I would encourage all of you to work hard developing your skills and wherever your passions lie. What seems like a mountain to climb doesn't look so steep on the other side, and you all have the potential to be successful in life. I wish you all the best in the future and congratulations to all of you on this momentous day. Greetings and congratulations, Elphinstone graduating class of 2021. Congratulations on finishing high school, but more so congratulations on surviving the most haywire year ever for high school graduates. My name is Sarah Pachalski. I am a graduate from the class of 1992 at Alphonstone, and I'm here just to tell you a bit about my path after graduating and hopefully give you a couple of tips on life. I have a Bachelor of Science from Simon Fraser, a Doctor of Veterinary Medicine from the University of Saskatchewan. I have postgraduate clinical training from the University of Pennsylvania and the University of California Davis where I studied the specialty of clinical medicine of radiology. I stayed there as a professor uh, and worked teaching in the vet school there for about a decade. After that, I started my own business that has grown since I started it in 2013 to have a number of employees now. I feel that my course as an academic person was a little bit of an underdog coming from Elphinstone and coming from Canada, quite frankly, going into the US and to the big schools. Um, but I think the most important thing that I could say is to have your eyes open and your head up and look for opportunities as they present themselves to you. And if you see the right opportunity, take it. Don't be afraid. Jump on it. Take some chances. Maybe apply for jobs you're not quite qualified for. But be ready because great things come out of uncomfortable changes like graduation and being able to be nimble and take new opportunities. My career path has been varied and I have loved every minute of it. The biggest accomplishment that I have gained is that I have a great job that I love to do every single day I get to work on the best equine athletes in the world and I get to travel the world teaching others about the things that I have gained. So my advice to you is just be ready. Be ready to take a risk. Look for opportunities and take them when you see them. And I wish you the best of luck going forward with your the beginning of the rest of your life. Congratulations and good luck. Hi grads, I'm Steve Sleep and although you might not know me, I've been working here and hanging around in these halls for an awfully long time. To find out how long, we have to go all the way down to the black and white section in the grads. And you have to go all the way back to the very, very first picture of the very, very first grad at Elphinstone, the 1952 grads, where my mom graduated from this school. And that's her right there. The very first yearbook for Elfie was called The Sentinel. 
Fast forward 20 years and I enrolled at Elphinstone in 1972 and I graduated in 76 and this is my grad photo right here. And that's me right back there in the fuzzy section. While I was in Elfie, we had the fire in 74 that destroyed the school, but I was lucky enough to be in the first class to graduate from the new school. After my grad, I went off to work and then I eventually returned here in 1985 to work right here in the TV studio, helping students learn about television production. So as you can see, I've been here for a while and I know what it's like to be an Elfie grad. And I've also had to go through some tough times in my grad years. I had the fire and you have a pandemic. And like the fire for me, it's caused huge disruptions in your school life. Eventually, you get to put away your masks, share some time with your friends and move on with your life. But I think if you look back at the pandemic, you'll find that it's made you a stronger person. You look at your community and your friends in a different way and you'll probably judge your successes differently as well. It's time to celebrate those successes and time to move on to the next step in your life, whatever you choose that to be. But as you celebrate those successes, remember where you started. And if you're in town, drop by the school and stop in and see your former teachers and tell them about what you're up to. Hearing about student successes is the best payoff an educator can hear. And remember that once you walk out the doors of Elphinstone for the final time, you join a bigger club, the grads of Elphinstone Secondary School. Once a cougar, always a cougar. Hi Elfie grads, my name is Kyla Ritchie and I am the former captain of Team Canada Women's Volleyball. And I just wanted to send you a very large congratulations on this very exciting day as you graduate from Elphinstone Secondary. I also was a graduate of Elfie myself back in 2007. And since I graduated, my life has been pretty much all volleyball and traveling the world. I went on to compete for the UBC Thunderbirds where I got my Bachelor of Kinesiology. We won five national championships when I was there for the five years. And then I went on to simultaneously compete for the national team for the last 15 years. And for the last 10 years, I've been playing professional volleyball overseas all around the world in places like Peru, Italy, Germany, Turkey, and many, many more. And I just wanted to come on here quickly and say congrats and really hone in on the fact that you are all so awesome and so strong for being able to graduate kind of against all odds. This year has been so wild for so many people and the fact that you are all here graduating from high school is a really big testament to who you are as individuals. So I would love to hone in on the fact that you guys can do whatever you put your mind to. It's not going to be a smooth road, even though I can say that I've competed for the national team and played professional volleyball all over the world. It's been really difficult and you'll experience that as, as the years progress. Maybe you'll change jobs, maybe you'll go to school, maybe you'll change careers. It's totally fine and you're going to find where you fit into this world, what you like, what you appreciate, the more you go through, the more you put yourself out there. Um, I'm actually just transitioning out of the athletic life. My husband and I have been working very hard this past year to create a winery called Valley Commons. And just a few months ago, we actually bought the winery Stone Boat up here in the Okanagan. So just like you, I'm also on a transitional path just to a new life and creating something for myself um, that maybe looked a little bit different than where I was just a few months ago. So I wanted to just say congratulations to you all. Take the fact that you have really persevered through this year. Take all that you've learned and just be confident moving into whatever comes next. I know that you all will have so much success and as long as you're happy, that's really the most important thing. So congratulations grads. You've done it really take a moment to just appreciate how far you've come because you've done a fantastic job and you're here congratulations and good luck <laughs>